it's estimated that more than 10 million people in the world have Chagas. The disease is caused by this little guy, Trypanosoma cruzii, a blood parasite. Let's go into its life cycle, and forewarning, it is a doozy. First and foremost, Trypanosoma cruzii is vector-borne. That means that it requires an invertebrate host, usually an insect, to complete its life cycle and transmit it. The vector in this case is kissing bugs, or triatoming bugs, or reduvid bugs, all names for the same type of insects. That's about the extent of kissing bugs that we're going to talk about in this video, because I've talked about them in other videos, and this is going to be about the protozoan parasite. Let's start with an already infected kissing bug. The parasite would be residing in the hindgut of the insect. The form it takes there is a tripomastigote, which you could consider the infectious form of the parasite. When a kissing bug takes a blood meal, usually on or around the mouth region, they also defecate there, and with that comes tripomastigotes. The trypomastigotes can enter the body through open wounds, like the small hole left where the kissing bug fed on you, or through mucous membranes, like those around your eye. Once inside the body, they beeline for cells. Specifically though, nucleated cells, so not your red blood cells. Once the trypomastigotes invade your cells, they transform into their next stage, amastigotes. There's kind of a theme with the naming. These amastigotes start replicating rapidly inside the cell, which is a great place to do that because they're hidden from your body's defenses. Then, once the cell's inflated like a bag of popcorn, they actually transform from amastigotes back to tripomastigotes, and then they lyse the cell, bursting out into your bloodstream again. This bursting of your cells is what causes most of the symptoms that we associate with Chagas disease. Now, these newly produced tripomastigotes can go one of two ways. They can either find a new cell to invade and repeat the amastigote process, or they can stay loose in the bloodstream. That way they can be picked up by a kissing bug the next time one feeds on you. Okay, that's a lot. Let's take a step back. Now, I just told you that tripomastigotes get pooped out by kissing bugs, picked up by mammals, they turn into amastigotes, then back into tripomastigotes, then rinse repeat that process a bit, then those tripomastigotes get picked up by kissing bugs. So that should be a full circle, right? Wrong. If there's one thing about being a good parasite, it's all about pumping up your numbers. And the trypomastigote goes through another replication process right here. So Trypanosoma cruzii goes from trypomastigote in the kissing bug to epimastigote. Epimastigotes are similar in function to amastigotes. Where amastigotes are the intracellular replication form in mammals, Epimastigotes are the extracellular replication form in kissing bugs. Confusing, right? And tripomastigotes are the free-moving, non-replicating form in both mammals and kissing bugs. Also, fun fact, Trypanosoma cruzii never goes through sexual reproduction. Epimastigotes, amastigotes, those are all asexual reproduction through binary fission. So to wrap up, epimastigotes, when formed, stick to the wall of the kissing bug's midgut. Once they're there, they reproduce asexually, and when they're ready, they transform back into tripomastigotes the last time. Here's our completed life cycle. 